<laughs> oh, applesauce everywhere. Applesauce everywhere. Come on, let's get up here. Clean up crew. I've got a couple of helpers, Atticus and Rosie. Yeah, hello. We get a lot of camera theme questions, and one of them is, how do we take pictures of a bunch of rowdy kids? As you can see. When your, kid, when your kid doesn't like having his picture taken, or he's energetic, or he's rambunctious, or he likes to play. Most of the pictures we take of the kids are of them out and about. We don't do a lot of like stage uh, family pictures. Atticus is looking at me like, who are you talking to? We do it occasionally and we'll do it on a tripod and we're all facing the camera. But for the most part, they're all pretty much action shots. And that's kind of how we like to do it. We like to catch the moment, capture the moment, rather than setting up and staging photographs. Oh. Rather than staging photographs. So I'm gonna ditch these kids so I can talk. And hopefully share with you a few tricks uh, that'll help you out so you can capture candid images of your kids ah! or of your family. These tricks will work for you. So I'm gonna reduce these tips down to three main things to try to remember when taking pictures of your kids. And the first one sounds like a no-brainer. You may have thought of this, but it is continuous shooting mode. kids are anything like mine, they probably don't like to turn to the camera, they probably don't like to say cheese, but they're constantly being found in moments where you want to capture them. And that's really the best case scenario, where you can kind of just distance yourself, let your kids be kids, and then capture the moment. But if you're shooting on regular single shot mode, you might miss that moment. So here's a great example. Earlier today, Atticus and I went to the pier, and as you can see, Atticus made a new friend. So he started playing fetch with him, and I decided to take some pictures on single shot mode for the sake of demonstration. And as you can see, on the first frame, here he is, and on the second frame, he's already like 15 or 20 feet away. And so you can really see how quickly someone can move and how much you can actually miss. So, go ahead and check to see if your camera has a continuous shooting mode. So on the Canon 5D Mark III, that mode is found by selecting the AF drive button here on the back you can toggle between the different modes and by default it's set to single shooting and now let's just go ahead and listen to what that sounds like one exposure two three four five so you can see how really long that took if your kids moving around it's really easy to miss that moment so we're gonna go ahead and toggle that to to high-speed continuous So here's another example of Atticus and his new friend walking across the screen, but the only difference this time is that I toggled my shooting mode onto high speed continuous, and you can really tell the difference. This time I was able to get off six frames in the time that I would normally be able to get off one in single shot mode. Really there's no comparison, single shot versus high speed continuous. If you really want to make sure to capture that moment, you definitely won't miss one on high speed continuous. There are also those times where you don't want to sound like a lunatic when you're out in public or in a park or around other people. And so one great thing I love about the 5D Mark III is you can toggle it to uh, either silent shooting or silent continuous shooting. It's a lot more quiet and you're not going to weird out your neighbor. But all the other cameras that we have have that mode. So here we have the EOS 80D. You'll see that there is high speed continuous, low speed continuous. Even our Rebel T6i has the same mode. So whether I'm indoors or outdoors, I definitely always try to use either continuous shooting or high speed continuous shooting. Now, a lot of photographers might call that cheating, but I don't really consider myself an elitist by any means. I'm really only interested in capturing the moment. So if it requires me shooting at like thousand frames per second, exaggerating obviously, then I'll go ahead and do that. So the first step is don't miss a moment. Make sure if your camera has a continuous mode shooting, use it and try to capture that moment. So the next tip I have for you is knowing when to use what lens. So first off, having a variety of lenses definitely does help. Uh, but depending on what we're doing or what the kids are doing, it might determine what lens I'm using at that point in time. So there's one picture in particular that I've always loved. It's from when we were in Paris and we went to, and I'm totally gonna butcher this name, so if you're French or no French, please don't hold it against me, Le Dieu Plateau or something like that. I know it has another name, but anyhow, we were there and all these kids got out of school and they were all playing. So Atticus went to go join a couple of kids 
and he ran over and just started making faces and laughing and the kids were cracking up and so I was there well at a distance to where I could let Atticus do his thing watch him do his thing and just like be fun and be a little boy but capture some of the most awesome moments and the reason why I was able to do that is because I was able to get at a distance with this big lens so when you want to catch expression you want to be in tight not wide this is a great lens I mentioned before, it's, it's a really expensive lens, so even when you don't have a lens like that, maybe you have a kit lens. This one here is the 18135. This obviously isn't the best lens, it's an introductory lens, it's not the fastest lens, but it's going to allow you to distance yourself. Definitely thinking, think about getting a lens that's got some zoom to it, uh, or just allows you to be back at a distance to capture. So we're back at the pier with Atticus and his friend and I decided to put on my 7200 so I could kind of just sit back and watch him play and take some pictures. For these shots I really wasn't interested in the skyline in the background. I really wanted to just concentrate on his face and his expression and really capture how happy he was playing with his new friend. On the other end of the spectrum are those moments when you want to capture your child doing something but you also want to capture what's going on in the background and really from a wide angle. And that's why I love this, my Canon 20mm 2.8. Now here we are on the other side of the pier, and this time I wanted to capture not only him walking, but also One World Trade Center in the background. So with the wide angle and high speed continuous, I was able to get the whole picture that I wanted. And sometimes you really want that. You want not only the subject, but the background, especially when traveling. Like this photo when we were in Banff. We were walking around Lake Louise, and Atticus was just loving stomping around in all the puddles. And so what we wanted to do was just step back and watch him have fun, but also memorialize that moment of traveling to a new place. So when all else fails, go for the 2470 or an equivalent lens. Uh, we love this lens and use it all the time, indoors and outdoors. It's a great versatile lens to once again back up a little bit, uh, a little bit and get tight shots, but then also to be able to get a little bit of wide angle to capture more of the surroundings. So we're back at the pier and Atticus and his new friend have their first fight. The dog takes Atticus' ball and Atticus gets sad, so I take the first frame, but then I realize that Atticus is making kind of a sad, funny face, and so I want to zoom in kind of tight. He did immediately cheer her up, but it's just nice to have a versatile lens that will allow you to shoot wide and tight, depending on what you need. So my third tip I want to give to you might sound like parenting advice, but it's not. If you want to capture those types of moments, just let your kids be kids. Let them run around. Let them fall. Let them climb. Let them do their thing. Let them be kids and just be in the background with the camera. Be equipped and ready to go so you can capture that moment because they're gonna come. All the time, friends and family tell me about how much they wish they had the same moments we had captured on camera, and you can totally do it. But there are just a few things you can do to up your game, and when it comes to taking pictures of your kids, if you do these three things, remember to toggle on continuous shooting, choose the right lens, and let your kids be your kids, you're gonna capture some awesome moments, I know you are. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any other questions. Remember to give it a thumbs up, to subscribe, and to tell your friends. Thanks again. So let's wait and see.